Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna be talking about E85 fuel. We're gonna start by explaining how E85 works, then we're gonna take a car to a dyno and see how 93 compares to E85, explain how E85 fuel quality varies, and talk about more power. Standard gas you put in your car comes from crude oil that is pumped from the ground. I'm new, I don't know what to do! E85 fuel comes from this, which is a vegetable. E85 is fuel that consists of 85% ethanol and 15% standard gasoline. The process to turn corn into fuel is pretty similar to that of making alcohol. So if you've ever watched the wildly educational award-winning documentary TV series, Moonshiners, you already know how this happens. Well, I hope we don't think nothing about them apples and that grain back here. Afternoon, Lieutenant. Well. The corn gets ground up, then combined with enzymes to break down that mixture. Then a distillation process is performed to extract the alcohol from that mixture. But you didn't come here for a chemistry lesson from a college dropout who LARPs as a technician on the internet. You came here because you heard them corn-fed boys get more horse ponies. Drop an ear, disappear. Don't you love how corny this has already gotten? E85 helps your car get more power in part due to its octane rating. Octane ratings in fuel indicate the fuel's ability to withstand detonation or knock. Detonation in an engine is when the spark plug ignites the air fuel mixture, but before the mixture has completed the burn, in another part of the cylinder, another ignition takes place by itself. These two explosions taking place in the cylinder then collide, causing a spike in pressures in the cylinder, which can cause spark plug damage, piston damage, and engine damage in general. E85 fuel has a octane rating of roughly 105, whereas standard premium gas in the US has an octane rating of 93. E85 having a higher octane means it has a higher resistance to detonation or knock. This means you can tune your car to advance the timing, which will give you more power, and you'll still have the protection due to the higher octane. E85 also burns cooler, and since cooler is denser, performance. Fun fact, E85 also burns cleaner, which can be seen here. To show what's possible with E85 fuel, let's start with the dyno on this 2015 GTI with the stock ECU tune and 93 octane fuel. So our stock tune on 93 octane fuel put out 235 horsepower and 297 pound foot of torque. Now let's see what just adding E85 fuel to the tank of this car will do for our numbers. There we go, 308 and 244 horsepower makes more power. So you're saying everyone should run E85? No, don't do that. So our stock tune on E85, again, no other changes, 244 horsepower, 308 pound foot of torque. As you can see, we got a big bump in power just from adding E85 to the car. But before you run out to your gas station to fill your car with E85, let's understand why that might not be the easiest thing on your car. E85 is primarily ethanol as the fuel source. The issue with ethanol as a fuel source is it has about 30% less potential energy than standard gasoline. This means that more fuel is required for the same output on that engine. To show you the difference of fuel required, we're gonna take that 2015 GTI and we're gonna take a road trip and compare fuel mileage on 93 versus fuel mileage on E85. Let's start with our 93 octane fuel. Fill it up, reset our trip, and here we go. Now the gas light in this car just came on and that is at 335 miles to the entire tank. Next, we fill up with E85, reset our trip again, and our gas light came on at 299 miles. With the same conditions, both highway driving, this car had roughly 10% more consumption with E85 fuel. But that was on the stock tune. Let's compare this with how this would function on a flex fuel tune, which maximizes performance. On our flex fuel tune with E85, our highway mileage is 325 miles. Now your mileage and consumption is gonna vary pretty widely. We've heard of people with E85 tunes running as low as 150 miles to a tank, upwards of about 200 on an E85 performance tune on these same type of cars. Let's talk about your fuel systems running out of fuel to make the proper power for your tune. To do that, we're going back to the dyno. This GTI has a stage two tune and the gas tank is full of E85. The fuel system on this is stock and remember the stage two tune we're using is a non-ethanol based tune. What we're about to show you is why you shouldn't run E85 on a tuned car without the proper fueling upgrades. 
Let's take a look at this chart, which was logged during a dyno run. The orange line in this represents the fuel pressure the car is requesting for the fuel system to make. The blue line is the actual fuel pressure the car is making during the dyno run. In theory, the blue line should look very similar to the orange line, but because the fueling system on this car isn't upgraded, you can see they have a big gap. It did not like that. As you can see, there's a considerable amount more power, 259 pound-foot of torque, 286 horsepower, and at the end, it was kind of freaking out a little bit as you saw it jerking around. To run E85 in your car, components like the low pressure fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump, and potentially the fuel injectors may need to be upgraded. In our GTI, the only fuel component we need to upgrade to be up to the task of E85 is the high pressure fuel pump. But depending on the car you have, the mods you need to run E85 will almost certainly vary. What that means is that unless you have a flex fuel car or the modifications to run flex fuel, you shouldn't run straight E85 on your car. It's possible your car would not be able to provide the additional fuel needed, which would lean out your engine and your wallet when something goes wrong. Now let's talk about E85 quality issues. Ethanol fuel is hygroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture. As E85 fuel sits, it will absorb more and more moisture. What this means is that ethanol content within E85 is not always consistent, so we need to do some testing. Also on a side note, I did indeed say hygroscopic, not hydroscopic. Now, did I tell you this to prove to you that I know things? Yes. But did I also tell you this to prevent you from spending 15 years saying the wrong words every time you refer to how brake fluid absorbs moisture? Also, yes. So we talked about ethanol fuel absorbing moisture if it's left for to sit for a long time, but I don't think this is a major issue. The more important issue is ethanol content that changes. This is especially important for people who are tuning for ethanol to understand ethanol content. I know I said E85 is 85% ethanol and 15% regular fuel, but it's not exactly 85%. If we look at the standard specifications for ethanol fuel blends for flexible fuel automotive spark ignition engines, in section 1.1, it says, fuel produced to the specification contains 51 to 83% by volume ethanol. What this means is that 83% is going to be about the highest you're gonna see from the average gas pump. The other 2% to get you to that 85% is hydrocarbons added so that the alcohol is not suitable for consumption. Remember moonshiners? This also means you might see as low as 51% ethanol content in your fuel. But why? The short answer is to keep your car starting properly year round. Higher levels of ethanol content are going to perform much worse during colder months in the year. Because of this, four classes of ethanol fuel have been developed depending on your area. So class one of this flex fuel is going to be the highest ethanol content with class four being the lowest ethanol content. Now we are in North Carolina. We don't get a huge variation in season. So we only see two different flex fuels of that, which would be class one and class two. But if you live somewhere much colder like Wisconsin, you're likely to see all four versions of this with the lowest ethanol content being in the winter months. And if you use fuel like that during the winter months in your car and you leave your car outside, you'll probably have a tough time starting your car. Ethanol content is especially important when you're tuning for E85. To get the most power during tuning, they're gonna do things like advanced timing. If you have a tune that has highly advanced timing that is pushed right up to the limit when you're running A85, this can be an issue if the ethanol content drops. Remember that knock stuff we talked about earlier? For people who run these kind of tunes, they're going to need to monitor the ethanol content that they're getting, which means they're gonna carry either a test kit like this, or they're gonna have a gauge hooked up into their fuel system that runs inside their car and tells them the ethanol content of the fuel that's in their car at any given moment. The preferred method though would be to run a flex fuel tune. This would require you to connect a flex fuel sensor to the ECM of your car, then install a tune on it to support that flex fuel sensor, at which point the car's ECM should be able to readapt depending on the ethanol content read by that sensor. Side note, if you don't have a flex fuel tune and you get lower E85 quality, you'll have to reflash your ECM to a different tune to make sure you don't over advance timing or have knock issues or whatever. So that is something common for people who are running ethanol based tunes. We're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area where ethanol is not super common. 
So if we look at this map on e85prices.com, we have very few options in our area. We have visited three of these gas stations, gotten samples of E85, so we can test them for you. So here is our fuel from three fuel stations. All of these are from Sheets fuel stations because in our area, Sheets is the only place you can get this sheet. To check out ethanol content, we purchased this test kit, which you can buy on Amazon for about 10 bucks. All we have to do is fill up the bottle to the blue line with water, then fill the rest with our E85, shake it, and wait five minutes. First station we tested, roughly 72% ethanol. Let's go with station number two. Five minutes, here we go. Gas station number two, 72%. Last station, about the same, about 72% ethanol. Also, keep in mind, this fuel station, these were all the Sheets fuel stations. One of these fuel stations, we actually filled that car up when we did the original stock testing and it tested at around eight in the low 80s. So this is evidence that this is probably related to it's getting colder here now and this was changed for the winter. And lastly, we bought this $60 jug of E85 racing fuel and we're gonna test that right now. After five minutes, the racing fuel tested just under 90%. Now we're gonna add our flex fuel sensor from integrated engineering, then tune the car with our flex fuel tune. Now we're gonna start by installing this flex fuel sensor. This goes in this line right here that goes from the low pressure fuel pump up to the high pressure fuel pump. Now this car, as you see, has a bunch of these screw clamps that I loosened because this car already had an E85 sensor in it, but we're gonna put another one in it. Now we have our harness to deal with. You see it's plugged in here. This one goes to the fuse box. This one goes to the ECM. This one goes to a ground. So we're gonna run that. Okay, so our harness goes through here, comes down around and then goes underneath. So if we take a look over here, we disassembled this box and we ran underneath over here. We need to upgrade the high pressure fuel pump to compensate for the additional fuel we need. So we're gonna remove this from the car. To do so, you have a plug here that you're gonna remove. You have this spring clamp you're gonna remove and then this hose will just pull off. You have a 17 millimeter down here which is a hard line you gotta break off. And then we have these triple squares. So we're gonna take this off and then we'll look at it afterwards. This is a factory fuel pump. To upgrade this, we actually disassemble it by disassembling this portion and just replacing the piston of this to upgrade the internals to give it higher pressure. Now we're gonna put our flex fuel software onto our car. That's from Integrate Engineering. Again, that's a true flex fuel tune, which is why we installed that sensor. We are race car ready. Now that we've installed our flex fuel tune and sensor on the car, we're gonna run this car on a dyno with 93 octane, then E85. The flex fuel tunes do allow you the ability to run anything from 91 all the way up to E85, and the car will automatically adjust based on that. Also, if you want one of these tunes or that flex fuel sensor, link in the description below to our site, shopdap.com. So to compare a difference of what E85 can do for a flex fuel system, we're gonna dyno it first. So this is the tune with the flex fuel setup. First dyno we're gonna do is with 93 octane fuel, which has 10% ethanol content. We use the flex fuel sensor to check the ethanol content based on what the car is seeing. So the results of our flex fuel tune on 93 octane fuel are 302 horsepower and 403 pound-foot of torque. Now let's check with the 85. Unfortunately, due to having more gas in the car than we wanted to during this tuning process, we weren't able to get the ethanol content as high as we wanted. The highest numbers we saw during this process was 57% ethanol that was reading from the ECM of the car. So our results, E85 flex fuel tune, 335 horsepower, 434 pound-foot of torque. So we got 33 horsepower and 31 pound-foot of torque just by dumping 85 into the tank. Keep in mind, had I not been dumb and put too much gas in the car to begin with, the ethanol content when we dumped in the E85 would have been higher, which means it would have put out more power as well. 
The real question now is how long is this stock clutch gonna last? The last thing I wanna to touch on is E85 eating your fuel system. That's a thing that's speculated about a lot. This is not a problem on modern cars. Modern cars have fuel systems that don't degrade the same way that people talk about online. If you have an older car, it is very likely that E85 and, and ethanol fuel could degrade your fuel lines. So that is something to be concerned about, but that's only relative on older model cars, I would say somewhere in the early to mid 2000s and previous. Also, if you want one of those cool drop in ear disappear E85 shirts, make sure you check out a link in the description. We're doing a pre-order for them and we will have them available very shortly. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.